love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy Look in the mirror if he is no friend of me It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry It's time to break up so I can make a better me Better believe in your mind cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything All it takes is some time and some clarity To find your identity, it's mind over everything so Haley slid into the first Ascendant in all of her glory, bringing with her an insane skill package to boot that even Lepic mains are starting to shake at. And while the news currently is around Nexon making her ridiculously tedious to get with upwards of 14 days to farm, it's definitely worth a look at what she brings to the table and how she achieves such daft numbers in Colossus Clears, so whether you've dropped the funds or are camping at home for the next fortnight to get her, you can see how to build her just right. Now in this video we'll cover the best modules to slot in, her best in slot weapon, her best in slot reactor and its roles along with components and what weapon modules you should slot in to improve her skills, as yes, these do make a crucial difference. As always, if you did enjoy and learn something useful with myself here, make sure to hit that subscribe button to find your way back to the channel. Helps me out a bunch and encourages me to do deep dives for all builds on the channel just for your sweet eyes. With all that covered though, let's take a look into the build. All right, so if I open up the uh, inventory screen, let's head over to the Descendant modules first. Now, you will notice that I am using tab two here because I am currently working on a couple more builds for her because she definitely has a bit more viability rather than just bossing. Now, the main things that we are looking to focus on here is because of how high her modifiers are, we want to go straight into skill power. Skill power and crit are going to be massively kind of like huge influential when it comes to everything that she is able to dish, dish out. And that is going to be the better things for you to actually like, like start slotting into. Now, to give you an idea as to how her kit kind of works, let's quickly ru run over the most important skills for her. And that is going to be her 1, a 3 and a 4. Now her 4 ability is going to be her unique weapon which is called Zenith. Now th this is going to be vitally important a little bit later on when we talk about the weapons. Uh, but essentially this equips her unique weapon which is called Zenith. When hitting an enemy with this weapon it greatly increases penetration and firearm attack and deals additional chill skill damage. You also get to recover a portion of your MP upon successfully attacking weak points and partially decreases the cooldown of the unique weapon skill when the skill ends depending on the number of fire bullets. Now this doesn't cost any MP to activate. Uh, and it doesn't have a duration either so the the last part of this is only going to happen if you put the weapon away now if you do have around about four four shots still left in the gun i believe this does give you the max of 90 percent skill cooldown so this will go from a 30 second cooldown down to three uh, the main things that we're going to focus on here are going to be how we can increase the amount of damage of this shot and every single one of these is going to happen from your base damage which is going to be the same as your equipped weapon. Now I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later on but just keep that in mind that whatever weapon you have equipped once you activate this skill that base damage is what's going to be filtered into this ability on top of that we're also going to have a bonus 3627.4 percent of our skill power that's going to be added to it as additional damage we're also getting a 50 percent firearm attack increase on our base weapon rather than that skill and then we're also getting four shots at standard and that 15 percent mp recovery if we hit a weak point now while that's good we are going to be using up mp while we're using this ability at least ideally and that is going to come from our third skill this is going to be called fury now how this one works is that this is a uh, version of bunnies kind of like sprint instead it's the inverse of that instead of making us faster it's going to be making us much slower but it is going to be offering us some incredible benefits so while we've got the skill active, we are going to be continuously draining our MP, but we're going to be getting stacks of Cold Fury. What this does is that every single stack is going to give us 2.5% increased crit hit rate on our firearms as well as our skills. Uh, so this goes stacks all the way up to 16. This means that we're going to be getting an additive 40% increase to our uh, crit hit rate for our firearms as well as our skills. Now we do have a base of uh, hit uh, critical hit rate of 5%, which means that if we do have this uh, maxed out and then we also have our five percent we're going to be hitting 45 percent skill crit hit rate before we do any more investment uh, so you can see that we are going to be building into crit quite nicely with this build uh, and there are some great ways of being able to do that so that we get 100 percent crit hit rate 
Now on top of that we also get some additional bonuses to our firearms, uh, most notably penetration, uh, but uh, we're also going to be losing our movement speed as well, the more stacks we have. So obviously, once again, if we have 16, we are going to be losing 40% of our movement, uh, so it's just going to make us kind of a bit slow, uh, which is not great for mobbing, but in most cases when it comes to Colossus, we are going to be standing still. Uh, so it's not going to really be like factor into much. Now just know that if you do use a movement skill, so this is going to be your uh, uh, your zipline as well as your roll, you will lose three of those stacks, but it does come back ridiculously fast, so don't worry too much about that either. The main thing that we're also going to get on this is additional buffs once we hit those max stacks, and so we do want to wait for 16 stacks before we start firing any shots, uh, so if you time this right you will have this pretty much from the get go. We also get skill critical hit damage of an increased 20% of additive, and then our firearm critical hit damage is also getting the same kind of benefit. Now there is one other thing that we can do to increase the amount of damage that we will be dealing from Zenith, and that is going to be coming from our first skill, and that is going to be called Cry Around. Now the reason why we want to activate this just before we start firing is because it offers a debuff. It does a little bit of damage, which is quite nice, but it also gives us a debuff onto those targets, and that is going to be called Cryo. So every single enemy that is affected by that, depending on how many stacks they have, every single stack of that is going to be giving us a one shot of 50% additional damage. Uh, so we if we are able to get this up to nine stacks, that means we get nine shots on them, or any kind of like uh, f form of damage that's going to hit them. Nine versions of that damage is going to be doing 50% more damage. So that's why we want to activate our uh, sniper. We want to make sure that we're at max buffs with our cold fury, and then we activate our cry around, which we can do while we do have out our unique weapon, and that is going to be apply the debuff, and then every single shot is going to deal even more damage on top of it. It is just basically compounding. It is absolutely huge when it comes to those numbers. So how do we kind of play into that? How do we deal even more damage, for, like just go beyond and go further than that? Well, the best way to do that is with through skill power, but we're also going to be going into crit. So let's start with our skill power first. Uh, what we want to do is going into anything that can give us that flat amount of skill power. Uh, and the best way to do that is just a pretty much typical kind of build uh, that you would go for a Lepic kind of Colossus fight. To do that, we want spear and shield. This is going to give us 8.1% of our skill power. It gives us some defense as well, which is quite nice. It gives us a little bit of staying power but that skill power is going to be huge and that is going to be one of the best ways as a defensive mod for us to still get some offense on top of that, we go for Chill Specialist. Now, there are ways that we can get a little bit more uh, skill power, but this gives us absolutely no downsides. So this, in my eyes, is the best one to go for. I believe you can go around about 6% uh, skill power a little bit higher, but that will cost you 50% of your skill cooldown, and I just don't think that's worth it in my eyes. So for the time being, 81.2% Chill Specialist is probably the best way to go, as that will filter into everything that's in the build. On top of that, we also have Glacial Synxium, and what that's going to do is give us an additional chill skill power of 10.2%, so that filters really nicely into all of our modifiers, and it's just going to give us extra skill power on top of it. So these three together are going to be your general skill power, but fortunately we do have one more mod, and that's going to be Dangerous Ambush. So when the enemy is not targeting us, we get to do an additional 24.9% skill power, and then if the enemy is knocked down, if they're kind of like stumbled or anything like that, we're going to get an additional 49.8% skill power, which feeds back into every single one of these modifiers absolutely huge so that's our base skill power but fortunately because of our skill 3 giving us some additive multipliers to our crit rate we can go heavily into the crit side of things and reliably actually hit that 100% crit rate which is absolutely golden so to do that we're going to be chucking in a every single kind of like crit mod that we can do but you will notice that emergency measures is completely based now I will explain that one quite shortly so we want to be able to pick up both of the blue mods. That's going to be our skill concentration, giving us the extra massive 115.4% hit damage. And then we've also got skill insight, which is going to give us 115.4% of our crit rate as well. Now, the reason why we've gone for this, uh, is, and this is going to be one of the best ways for us to get to 100%, is because that by itself, combined with the 45% uh, crit hit rate that we would have had with our skill 3 and max stacks, is going to give us around about 94, 95, maybe even 96% crit hit rate but we won't go a little bit further than that now to be able to do that we do need to then chuck in the purple mods now fortunately one of them gives us more uh, crit hit damage which is what we're after and then the other one can just kind of like mop up the rest of it and uh, be able to give us that 100% crit hit rate so front lines it is going to be the biggest increase to our skill critical hit damage so that 100% we want to be able to maximize that one out and then by using emergency measures we're going to be increasing our crit hit damage by 7% but it also gives us an additional 16% percent when it comes to our crit hit rate now the reason why that doesn't matter is if I come myself 
to bring ourselves over to the laboratory and I activate the third skill which we'll just kind of show how this works in action so you can see uh, that this is just going to be climbing its way up um, and then it's just going to hit 100% max uh, so the, being able to maximize that mod out yes would be nice for the additional around about 15-16% increase to the crit hit damage but it's not really necessary and it's going to be a lot of investment just to be able to get that. Now if you are fully min-maxing, 100% you do want to chuck that one in. Uh, but as it currently stands, that is more than enough for what we kind of need. And just being able to activate this ability will just pretty much get us there. Now lastly, we did have a little bit of space left over and we did already have a couple of these socketed. Uh, so we did put in an increased defense. Now this is going to be giving us a nice little way of uh, like sustain for staying inside the fight. Especially when it comes to things like Molten Fortress which is able to hit most of the team all at the same time. Uh, so you can just reliably take a couple of hits while you're still uh, firing off your sniper shots. So that's something that you can consider into this build. It's not needed. It definitely could be replaced with something else. Uh, but in terms of like sockets as I've currently got, I thought increased defense was quite a nice boost and it does turn out to be quite nice of being able to have some sustain in the fight. So that's it for the module side of things, so we can start having a look in terms of the gear and the components. Now, we're going to start with the reactor, and unfortunately I don't have a really good reactor for this build, but we can discuss what we're looking out for. The reason why is because we don't have a best-in-slot farm for it just yet. While there is a 1-4 uh, chill and singular that does exist, it's not for heavy uh, the heavy rounds, uh, which is going to be the high-power rounds. So that's going to be the best-in-slot for us. The reason why, as you can see on this one right here, which is going to be for all the clips that you've seen in the background, uh, we ideally want an optimization condition of piercing light. Uh, it's going to be vitally important a little bit later on once we talk about the weapons, uh, but you definitely want to meet that condition and you're going to want to have piercing light out. Uh, so it makes sense to have your mounting pretty much uh, sorted for that weapon. So being able to get that 160% is going to be huge for the build. Uh, you also want to be able to go for chill. Uh, ideally you want singular next. Uh, like I said, it doesn't currently exist, but uh, it might do over the next week or two, so fingers crossed for that. Uh, but in terms of roles that you want at the bottom, uh, there is only one option. Uh, there is nothing else that even comes close, uh, but Colossus uh, skill attack as well as crit hit damage is going to be the best in slot uh, because we've already got 100% crit hit rate we do not need any more uh, crit hit uh, to the Colossus skill damage is going to filter back into everything that is in the build and then crit hit damage because we're already going to be hitting crits pretty much left right and center it makes sense for us to try and improve that even further so that is the best in slot and that is ideally what you're looking out for Components wise, it's, I mean, is it any surprise? It just has to be a four piece slayer. Uh, this is just the matter, the biggest increase to skill power that exists in the game as, as to uh, current knowledge. Uh, that 26.1% 20, filtered into everything, that is going to be filtered into your skill two. It's going to be filtered into your skill one just to do a little bit more tickle damage. And then also on your skill four, which is going to compile on top of your weapon. Fantastic! It, it is the only it is the only setter that should be up for consideration. Now there are other things that I probably would recommend for other builds for Haley, uh, but for bossing Slayer is just the way to go. So make sure you have rolls for max HP. Uh, max MP is also going to be huge because that means your skill three will stay up for longer. Uh, so definitely want to be able to grab one of those. Uh, increasing your defense is great for everything else that we've talked about skill module wise for the build. And then being able to get max shield will just give you a little bit of extra uh, just for like staying power before it starts taking away in chunks into your HP. So that just leaves us over with the weapons then. So what you kind of want to do is you want to have two weapons. Uh, we've already discussed the best in slot for in terms of what you want to have equipped, but you also want a really good mobbing weapon. Now because of how uh, the skill three interacts with weapons as well, so if we uh, just activate that once again, uh, you can see over on the left hand side we're also getting crit hit rate uh, increases over here as well. And we'll see once we get to max that uh, the Enduring Legacy is going to be at 68.52. Now, mine's not fully maxed out, but still, that is absolutely fantastic for a weapon. And we're doing 8.25% crit hit damage. Uh, you can go for things like Secret Garden. Secret Garden can hit 100% crit hit rate because it is absolutely daft. It has one of the highest crit hit rates uh, in the whole game when it comes to weapons. So that's something that you can actually rock with. And that also comes with a pretty good uh, crit hit damage kind of modifier as well. So, you know, you can definitely try out with different things uh, feel free to be able to have a mess about, find your favourite mobbing weapon, but you're going to need something to deal with the trash mobs that do spawn inside the Colossus fights, just in case it's like a public lobby and it goes on a little bit longer than normal. But the main kind of damage dealer that you're going to want to have, or the main kind of weapon you want to have equipped at most times when it comes to your skills, is going to be Piercing Light. Uh, the reason why for this one is uh, it just is the, the, the highest base damage when it comes to a weapon. Uh, the 
it doesn't really kind of come close uh, in terms of anything else. Like Afterglow Sword is a pretty good weapon, but that is only 114,000. So we're losing out on 79,000 uh, base damage just from swapping over to that weapon. It's just not even close. It's not comparable. Uh, Piercing Light is just the way to go, and that is going to give you the highest base damage that you're going to have uh, when it comes to your unique weapon. Now, in terms of what roles that you can have on the weapon as well, some of these do actually transfer over. Uh, Firearm Tuck seems to. Uh, I believe Crit Hit Damage also seems to as well. And uh, Electric Attack also seems to as well. So uh, in terms of like elements, the only thing that I wasn't able to test is if that bonus Firearm Attack versus Colossus does actually roll into I want to say it does but I, I, I don't know for certain unfortunately I've not actually personally tested it out but uh, I, I do think that's probably one of the better rolls to be able to have on just in case you would play on using the sniper just by itself anyway so we've talked about the weapon and why it's useful, so let's have a look at what the modules that we're going to be slotting in. Now, there are going to be ones that I'm going to recommend that you steer clear of, and there are going to be ones that I recommend you slot straight into this bad boy, because that is going to give you the most amount of damage. Uh, one straight off the bat that I would recommend you avoid is going to be fire rate up. Uh, this seems to do absolutely nothing in my testing, or if it did do something, it's so negligible that I couldn't actually decipher it on my screen. Uh, there was barely anything, and you might as well use those points elsewhere. Uh, the th in terms of like the best combo that did do something here is going to be rifling reinforcements as well as action and reaction that does give fill give you some base firearm attack that's going to filter into everything on the build so I do recommend that you do grab those especially for crit base builds which we're going to be going into. Uh, in terms of like other mods, highly recommend that you do put expand weapon charge on here. Uh, being able to just have this one is going to give us an additional two shots before we then lose the skill. Uh, you can go for other ones as well. Uh, I was messing about with maximize weight balance. But by putting this one on, I only got an additional shot. Uh, the weak point damage does tra carry through; it does it does transfer over. Uh, but uh, it's it's up to you if you've got if you've got the space, then great, you can get that additional shot, which is which is great because it is a massive amount of damage. Uh, but you know, if if you don't, then. Expand Weapon Charge is just fine by itself just to get those two. Uh, weak Point Damage, like I've just mentioned, that also did carry through as well. Uh, so being able to increase uh, uh, Piercing Light uh, so it can get to 5.5% uh, on... Sorry, 5.5 times when it comes to Weak Point Damage is huge. Would recommend that. Uh, and in, also in terms of like yellow mods, there were only two that I would recommend. Uh, a lot of these did not work. Uh, like in terms of like Strength and First Shot did nothing. Uh, dope, dope and minor, uh, minor. Let's just go with that one. Uh, activate it, it. It didn't seem to do anything that I could tell. Um, so that that's that's pretty much a dead dead in the water one. Uh, but in terms of like the two that I would recommend are going to be special sites as well as weak point expansion. Now, depending on the type of fight you're going into and depending on how you've customized your piercing light, uh, it will de depend on which one you actually go for. Uh, weak point expansion is great for a quick fight. It's great for solo. It's great for um, just purely increasing your DPS just instantly. Uh, this is a massive burst of damage, uh, and this is going to be the fastest way of being able to get the most weak point damage out there. So that gives you 140% on your very first weak point hit, uh, which is pretty pretty huge. Uh, it, it, it does pretty much kind of like destroy uh, shoulder parts and stuff like that off, off Colossus. Uh, but the other one is special sight. You are going to be aiming down sight with your uh, Zenith, and you're not going to be moving, so... There's pretty much no there's no penalty with this, uh, and you get 30% increased weak point damage on every single shot. If you are increasing your magazine, just keep in mind that if you do five shots with this, and every single one of those are a weak uh, weak point, uh, you will be doing more damage than the weak point expansion. You just will be doing it over a longer period of time. Uh, so just weigh up the options. Uh, it, it completely depends on how many rounds in the magazine you have, and if you're going to be in a public lobby or if you're going to be in a solo lobby. Lastly, a couple of mods that I do not currently have in this because I don't have the space, but I would recommend. Uh, you definitely want to go for things like crit. Uh, crit are going to be not necessarily crit hit rate, but better concentration is going to be huge. That does seem to filter through. Uh, but anything that increases your critical hit damage does seem to affect your final shots. So I would recommend slotting in those as well. And there we have it, that is all you could need to know for Hades bossing builds. Now while I do need to level up my piercing light much higher to max out a DPS, even at its base the weapon is strong enough and Haley can carry you through most, if not all, content that is currently possible. Is she the best descendant in the game right now? Possibly. Not for everything, but she does have a lot going for her, especially in that single target damage area. I can't wait to see what she'll get transcendence mod wise when it comes on October. But this is the section I want to hear from you. How are you finding the first Descendant? What are your thoughts on Haley? And do you think she's bro broken the ceiling of power for Descendants? Let me know all that and more down below. 
Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. And as I always say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well. I'll see you all on the next video.